everybody, here we are again. And I thought I'd do a quick video because something a bit I don't usually do. It's a single can kit. This one is Tom Caxton's Yorkshire Bitter. First thing is to get rid of the label, or most of it. It's been in hot water for about 20 minutes or so. Now I saw, as an aside, I saw a review on one of the premium kits that I normally do, which has the two cans of malt extract. And they've marked it down because the tins don't come with a label. They're in a box that tells you what it is. Do you need to have labels on the tin? No. Because all you're going to do is take the label off. Because it gets in the way. Right. Enough of that sort of ranting malarkey. Right. This is how I do all my kits that come in cans. Normally it's, as I say, two cans of malt. First off, open the lid, not rocket science, but don't take the lid all the way off. Leave about half an inch connected and as you're getting round, lift the handles of your can opener slightly and if it's cut the lid, which it hasn't there, lifting the handles, pushing it down, I'll lift the can lid slightly, just to aid you. It will lift it slightly more than that, but it's enough. But it was still connected round to the side, so. That's it straight in. Mm, tasty bolt. Now, I used to faff about trying not to get dribbles on the can or anything like that. But I found a better way. Right, so once you've got most of the extract into your fermenter, turn it around, tilt the lid up slightly. Get your hot water that you boiled in your kettle, um, 1.7 litres this holds. And then with your can inside the fermenter, run near boiling water onto the lid. Some of it's going to go into the fermenter, some of it's going to go into the can. Doesn't really matter. Once your lid is clean, as you can see, clean lid, stick the whole can in a three litre jug. Top up with the rest of the water. The rest can go into the fermenter. Now, I'd normally drink the sugar, but I haven't got any sugar. And normally it'd be just bog standard table sugar, but I don't think it makes any difference. I'll brew with both, I'll brew with brewing sugar and table sugar. The only difference it seems to make is that brewing sugar brews out faster. Right, so I'll dry malt extract into the fermenter, just doing a quick lashing in. So it's just in with a bit of hot water and malt at the moment. I think this is how I used to do it, can't remember. One way you end up with lumps, this is probably where it ends up with lumps. I think there's several different ways where you mix it carefully with some cold water or, I can't remember, it's ages since I've done uh, brewed malt, dried malt extract. So yeah, it's um, dark spray malt, a litre of that, a litre, a kilo of that, so two thousand gram packs. Mix that in. Like 
point of bull conversion. Right. Holding on to the lid as you can. Give it a damn, damn good stir. Cut it in a jug. Not, not, doesn't matter too much about spilling it. Wash your spoon up and down. And if you've got any dribbles down the outside, just lift some of the hot liquor up until it's dissolved. Second jug, hold it onto the can, tip it forwards, and then pour it in. You haven't got all of the malt extract out, but as you can see, that's completely clear. If you haven't got it all out, pour it back in. So put your can in the second jug, pour it back in. If you've got dribbles around the top, stick your can in. Just be careful because it will have a tendency to bubble out as the air expands, so just dip it in quick and lift it out. And that should be a completely perfectly clear can, inside and out, lid and everything. Thereby not wasting any of your mould. Obviously that goes straight into the fermenter. So it warms out and then top up the cold water. Top right, here we are. Test, test glasses out. So this is the Tom Caxton's Yorkshire Bitter single can kit. But as you've seen from the video, I brewed it with a kilo of dry malt extract. Ignore the instructions in that part of the video. That's not the way to dissolve dry malt extract. It took me about half an hour to sort out the lumps. Um, I think you make a paste with a bit of cold water, as if you're making Horlicks or something like that, and then add a little bit more water and then add some hot water. Or you make it with serious lumps in and then have to stick it on the hob for a good 20 minutes to warm everything up and dissolve your huge, mongously large lumps. Right, so enough of that. We've got uh, it's not the usual torch, but we've got a torch. As you can see, it's Clear. It's a nice amber colour, possibly a slightly red colour. If you look up the light, it's got a red hue to it. Let's sort of see. It's more sort of orangey amber through the, the big light. Anyway, let's stop faffing about. It holds a cap. The head dies down quite quickly, but it holds a ring, shall we say, of capping. Right, smell. Aroma. Not very much. It's a... Yeah, vaguely malty beer smell or soapy fingers Let's just dive in to beer it's quite pleasant slight bittering
and um, maybe slightly toffee notes. Slightly fruity. What sort of fruit would that be? Sort of plumish, I think. It's very mild fruitiness. Quite a strong lingering maltiness. It's not a bad beer. As I say, I used a kilo of dry malt extract. And that then makes it only a saving of about two pounds from the premium malt extract kits. The ones that you get two cans of pre-hopped malt. And those are far easier to make. So is it worth saving two pounds? Nah. It's not far off the flavour of the premium kits. Put it down, see if we can get a, a ring to form. But it's still lacking a little bit. There's, yeah, not as much hot flavour as even the lower end of the price range of the premium kits, those that come in around £20 mark. The top end that come in around £25 mark, those that have a dry hop addition, those are far more hoppy. For obvious reasons, you got a dry hop. So you can see if you put it down, don't faff about with it. You get lacing rings as you should do on a pint of beer. Um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd much prefer. I bought a few few single can kits to revisit them. I'll do one with just sugar. I'm expecting a slightly lower mouth feel. That has a decent mouthfeel because I've added the malt myself with the dry malt extract. I think it was dark dry malt extract that I added. But the um, if you just add sugar, I seem to remember that's why I moved on to the premium malt extract kit. A little bit of windy pops. Um, because pimping them up was just a bit of a faff and if you didn't pimp them up you got a slightly watery taste it was still an alright beer probably tasted like a more like a lager than a bitter that sort of wateriness very nice yeah, it's still good, but it is lacking, lacking a little bit that the premium kits supply. So, there you go. Ignore the first half of the video, where I've cocked everything up, apart from rinsing of the can out. Yeah, that's okay. Some top tips there, but... If you're going to add dry malt extract, don't do it that way. Stop waving your arms about. Right, like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.
Don't listen to them